Hello, everyone. Welcome to channel. Today topic to discuss is basic of aerodynamics. This is come under the subject of low speed aerodynamics. It's come under the pro program of BTEC Aeronautical Engineering. Myself, Arun Nema, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Aeronautical Engineering, uh, Bharat Institute of Science and Technology, Institute of Higher Education and Research. So today we are going to see about the basics, the basic aerodynamics and theory of flights. So outline of my presentation will be talk about the introduction. Uh, what are the things are there in the aircraft, how it's work out, all other things. And then we will talk about that atmosphere. It's this very important factor because uh, most of the time aircraft will be flying in the air so how the atmosphere will affecting over the aircrafts and how it's overcome those things. And then we will talk about the Newton's law of motions. Then we will talk about the burn on principle based on that the aircraft's working. Then we will see for airfoil. Then we will talk about the parts of an airplane. That's also very important factors. Then the forces of air flights, the forces which are acting over the aircraft, the axis of the aircrafts and the movement of the aircrafts then stability, how it can stable, where it can go, what it can do. And then we will talk about the uh, control of the aircrafts, control surface of the aircrafts. So introduction. So what exactly aerodynamics, where the, uh, what are the forces are acting, where is acting that we will see here. So it is unnecessarily that a mechanic be totally also on aerodynamics and theory of flight. So it's not compulsory that a mechanic will be knowing each and every thing about the aircrafts, but he must understand the relation between the atmosphere, the aircrafts, and the forcing acting on the flights. In order to make intelligent decisions affecting the flight safety of both airplanes and helicopters. So now we'll go for the aerodynamics. So aerodynamic is the study of objects in motion through the air and the forces that produce, a, that produce or change such motions. So what are the forces acting over that? So next we'll talk about the atmosphere. So atmosphere is very important factor because most of the times uh, air, uh, aircraft is flying in the air and how it can resist those forces, how it can overcome it, that we will see here. So air is a mixture of gases composed particularly principle of nitrogen, oxygen, <clears throat> and other, other gases like carbon dioxide. So an aircraft operates in the air, therefore the properties of air that affect aircraft control and performance must be understood. So here three factors mostly come in the pictures. First one is pressure. Okay, second one is density. And third one is humidity. So what exactly pressure? So pressure, we talk about the atmospheric pressure. varies with altitude. Okay, and the higher an object rises above sea level, the lower the pressure. Density, it varies directly with the pressure, inversely with the temperatures. The, with the same horsepower, an aircraft can fly faster at high altitude because of less resistance of air at air. Humidity. Humidity is the amount of water vapor in the air. It varies directly with the temperature. Then we will talk about Newton's first law of motion. So this is also an important factor because based on these laws only, uh, the principle and the working in the aircraft will work. So according to Newton's first law of motion, an object at rest, remain at rest in motion, will continue in motion at the same speed in the same direction until and unless an outside force acts on it. So for an aircraft to taxi or apply, a force must be applied to it. It would remain at rest without an outside force. Once the aircraft is moving, another force must act on it, bring it to a stop. It would continue in motion without any outside force. This willingness of an object to remain at rest or to continue in motion is referred as inertia. So the meaning is that until and unless we will not apply a force over things, it will be move on. If you want to stop it, we have to uh, apply a force over that and stop it. If you want to push move forward it, we also have to apply force of that. Then Newton's second law of motion. So the second law of motions state that if an object moving with uniform speed is acted upon by an external force, the change of motion 
acceleration will be directly proportional to the amount of force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object being moved okay so we can say force is equals to mass into acceleration as you can see here in the formula also i mention is so m is the mass a is the acceleration the motion will take place in the direction in which the force is acting simply said that this means that an object being pushed by 10 pounds of force will travel faster than it would be were pushed by 5 pounds of force so how much amount of force you will apply that much amount of reaction will happen the heavier object will accelerate more slowly than the lighter object when an equal force is applied if a, if suppose we apply a same uh, 100 kg of uh, uh, biro or a block uh, for uh, we are applying 10 pounds of force and same we are uh, applying for 500 kg of uh, uh, block uh, 10 pounds of force so the 100 kg will be move faster than the 500 kg of block then we move on to the newton's third law of motion so the third law of motion state that for every action there is a equivalent opposite reaction so this law can be demonstrated with a example of balloon if you inflate a balloon with air and release it without securing the neck as the air is expelled and the balloon moves in the opposite direction of the air rushing out of it so from the figure you can see it the balloon is there if you fill it air from your mouth and then if you didn't close the neck of that the air will come out and the balloon will be going in the opposite direction even a rocket also work on the same principle newton's third law of motion there is equivalent opposite reaction now we move on to the bernoulli's principle this is the most important principle based on that only the all the fluids will be follow this and working on that so bernoulli's principle state that when a fluid flowing through a tube reaches a constriction or narrowing of the tube the speed of the fluid passing through the constriction is increased and its pressure is decreased as you can see in the figure uh, uh, we have a uh, three you can say the meters uh, in that first one the velocity and pressure and the middle of the tube velocity and pressure and the last one velocity and pressure so you say that inlet where area is more so there is no changes in velocity and pressure but you see in the middle the throat of the pipe when the area is reduces the velocity increases okay and the pressure is reduces when the same thing happen it in the out outlet of the pipe the velocity become normal and the pressure also become normal then we talk about the air foil so an air foil is the shape of the wing or a blade as seen in the cross section you can see in the picture an aircraft wings horizontal and vertical stabilizers are built with uh, are built with air foil shaped cross sections as are a helicopter rotor blades so you can see here in the picture you can see that an air foil so the starting of the air foil we call as leading edge standing of the air foil we call as trailing edge and the line joining with them between that we call as uh, the pod line okay the the line the which is straight lining connecting the leading and trailing of the air foil called the uh pod line and uh, the mean camber line is the line drawn midway between the upper and lower surfaces so it have a angle of attack also uh, which will be generating with the rate of winds and the total length of the air foil uh, if you see it from the leading edge to leading edge we call as the length of the air foil we call as pod length and it also uh, distinguish between upper surfaces and lower surfaces okay and the line uh, which is passing through that we already seen about the mean camber line okay so next we move on to the air foil as a venturi tube so you can see here there are two surfaces upper and lower surface of the wing uh, so as you can see that uh, the flow of the air will be more uh, on the upper surface of the air foil so the flow will be more and because of that why the flow will be, so flow will be more means the pressure will be less and the velocity will be more and the opposite directions in the means you can say the lower surfaces the pressure value is more and the velocity will be less so because of that kinetic energy and potential energy also will changes so in the upper surfaces kinetic energy because of the velocity will increases okay and the potential energy also increases and as the pressure decreases potential energy also will be decreases and you can see that below that there is arrow so lift force will be always uh, appear here and it's try to push the aircraft in upper direction 
So now we come to the parts of the airplane. So different types of parts are there. The front nose cone of the airplane we called as cockpit. And where the passengers are sitting it, we called as fuselage. And the lift will be generated most of the way the wing. And they having a different, different kinds of flaps, which will be depend on the operation. It can be used it. And then there is the aileron in the wing. m finance will be the back part of the aircrafts. Okay, then stabilizers, horizontal and vertical stabilizers. A rudder is there for changing directions. Elevators are there. And then engine. So here you can see that in the clear picture of the airplane, you can see the front part where cockpit is there where pilot will be sitting and giving the command and controlling the aircraft. And then uh, after that, if you go to the left side up, you can see the jet engine uh, generate thrust. So from based on that, we will get the thrust, which will move the uh, aircraft forward. And then there is a wing that also helps to generate the lift. And then uh, we have a back of vertical stabilizer and horizontal stabilizer, which will control the pitch and yaw. So pitch means the, uh, the, when the, whenever the aircraft is take off, take off uh, it will be the nose up and then nose down. And your conditions means changing the directions. And that's why we, they have a rudder, uh, which will be say, change the side. And then we have an elevator, which will change the pitch, move the nose of the aircraft up and down. Then we have the flaps, which will be uh, change the lift and drag. And then we have ailerons. Uh, but this will be helpful for uh, rolling of the aircrafts. And then we have a spoiler, which will reduce the lift at the time of landing and drag. And then we have a slats, which will change the slips. And the middle part of the aircraft, we call as fuselage or body, where a payload or the passenger will be sitting over there. Uh, these are the four forces. These are very important four forces that are acting over in aircrafts. So the forces acting on airplane in flight are lift, weight, thrust, and drag. So these forces are equilibrium during a straight and level unaccelerated flight. So when a plane is on the ground and it's not have, uh, uh, flying or taxing it, so these are the four forces will be acting on equilibrium. So you can see that the lift always try to move up. So that we call as upward force. And thrust is called as the forward force, which move the aircraft forward. And drag is the opposing force of thrust, or you can say the resisting force, and weight, which always act the uh, downward of the aircrafts. So weight, or also we call as a gravity. So then we talk about lift. So lift is the force created by interaction between the wings and the airflow. It always acts upwards. It is considered to be the most important force. Without it, an aircraft cannot ascend from ground and maintain altitude. So the, in a, another way, we can say that without lift, aircraft can fly, cannot fly. If, if aircraft want to fly, want to take off, any kind of operation they want to do means lift is, must be there. So lift, what it is, is an aerodynamic force and must be exceed weight for flight because previous slide we have seen it. If they are equilibrium means they are on the ground. If they are flying, it means the lift value and the lift quantity should be more than the weight of the aircraft. Uh, then it is generated by motion of aircraft through air, created by the fact of airflow, fast wing, and aircraft will lift act through a single point called the center of pressure. Okay, so here you can see that Newton's third law and lift, how they both correlate and how they work. So for every action, uh, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So you can see that in the first picture, where aerofoil is there, and here you can see that the flow, which is coming from the left of the airfoil, is coming over here, and then uh, it's, going to the right side. So what happening? So here in the upward direction and the right side will be the downward direction. So this we call as flow deflected down. Okay, so here you can see the arrow where lift is acting over the arrow point. Okay, next you can see the second picture on spinning ball. Okay, so how it's happening? It So one-sided flow is coming and one side is going it. So one time it's the down deflected down. So it will move the ball up. Okay, then second one is jet engine. Uh, so you can see that engine pushed forwards. This is also we call as thrust forces, which will generate it, so which will move the aircraft push forward. But here you can see the both the arrow and one sided engine push forward, the opposite force will go back, which push the backward. 
So here we talk about Newton's second law and lift. So here uh, previously also we have seen it, the force uh, equals to mass into acceleration. So here they have, uh, 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 I'm going to explain you through the example and you can say the, uh, with the numerical uh, values. So you can see the lift is a force and force is equal to mass into acceleration. This also denoted by M and A and uh, mass uh, will, value units will be kg and acceleration will be uh, meter per second square. So change in velocity with respect to the time. So here you can say F is equals to MA and F is equals to here change in the velocity means V1 minus V0. If we take the starting point and ending point and it acceleration is changing velocity with respect to the time. So you can see down here T1 minus T0. So velocity has both magnitude, speed and direction. Changing either the speed or direction of a flow generate, the lift also will be generated and also moving the fluid. Then here we can see that lift wing sanction. So here we have an aeroplane with some angle of attack. So here you can see that the second picture, the flow is coming, which is very streamlined to the aeroplane. But once we got angle, some angle, the aeroplane got some angle of attack, it will be flowing over that. Okay. So here, as I told you previously, in the upper surfaces, the pressure will be less, the velocity will be high. And if you see the lower surfaces, the pressure will be more and the velocity will be less. Okay, so here you can see that upper streamline and lower streamline. So you can see that upper streamline, the first starting, it will be very laminar. And after that, it's because of the shape of the aeropoil is got varying and then it's came. So you can see that the distance between the upper streamline and lower streamline, the door down will be the shorter distance. Okay, so we also uh, uh, write the lift uh, with the equation, a uh, lift is equals to, uh, uh, CL into one by two rho A into V square. So L is denoted by lift. CL is the coefficient of lift and rho is the density. A is the area and V is the velocity. Then we will talk about angle of attack. So the angle of attack is the angle between the quad line and the average relative free relative wind or we also call as free steam wind, relative wind. Okay, so here you can see that in the picture, the aerofoil is there, which is an angle of attack. So this red mark, which is there, that angle we denote as angle of attack. It also denoted by alpha. And here, this is the chord line, and this is the relative wind. So here, they are generating an angle, which angle call is angle of attack. And here, you can see that after that, the lift will be moving forward, okay, and drag will be moving in the backward directions. So here, we will generate a resultant force. And the point where this thing happened, we call as center of pressure. So one thing is there, the greater an angle of attack creates more lift, but up to some limit beyond that, okay, the lift separation will happen it and the stall condition also will happen. So then angle of attack with respect to the lift forces. So as you can see that in the first picture, the aerofoil is in five degree of angle of attack. So here you can see the relative wind, okay. And here you can see the drag. So as you can see here, the angle is creating, which is angle of attack. So here you see the upper surfaces, uh, the velocity is high and the pressure is low. And here you can see the downward of the aerofoil, the uh, velocity is less and the pressure is high. Okay, so this is the weight is always acting downward. If you go to the second picture, in that you can see the angle of attack is very high. Because of that, you can see the right side of the picture of the aerofoil, more and more vortexes are generated or more drag is generated. So what happening, the lift will not, the lift will be increasing up to certain limit, but beyond that, the flow separation will happen. So there are the chances plane can get fresh. Okay, then we talk about angle of incidence. So the angle of incidence is the angle between the cord line and the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. As you can see here in the picture, so this is the uh, aircraft longitudinal axis, and this is the cord line of the aerofoil, and here the angle is creating, that angle we call as angle of incidence. So it is the angle of wing setting. And when the leading edge of the wing, when the leading edge of the wing is higher than the trailing edge. And the angle of incidence is said to be positive. And it is called as negative when the leading edge, leading edge is lower than the trailing edge of the wing. 
So here you can see some of the few of the horizontal component of lift. Uh, so as you can see, then the first picture, this is then uh, unsteady flight. Then so here the, all the forces uh, will be uh, in the equilibrium condition, or we also called as level flight. So the lift will be always moving upward direction, weight will be downward, and then if you can say the left side will be the thrust and the right side will be the drag. So when we got some angle of attack, the position of the lift and weight will be changing. So as you can see in the second picture, we called as medium bank turn when the aircraft is turning it at that time. So what will happen? So the lift previously, which is there in the middle direction, will shift to the left direction. So we called as their total lift. And this is the vertical component of the lift and left side down will be called as horizontal component of the lift. And centripetal force also will come in the picture and then resultant load. So previous compared to the first picture, second picture, the lift will be little bit uh, change because of the uh, plane will be turning it. Then we will go to the next picture where the aircraft is turning with so much of angle. We call it a steep bank turn. So here you can see the total lift will be the direction is got changed. So here also two component will come. One the vertical component, second the horizontal component. And then uh, centrifugal force will be acting out that and weight will be there in the downward direction. Okay, then we will talk about the lift and induced drag. Okay, so we will, we will talk about the lift and induced drag. So lift acts through the center of pressure and perpendicular to the relative weight. So as you can see, as you can, as you can see in the picture, okay, so we have uh, an aerofoil with some angle of attack. And uh, as you can see, the flow is flowing over that. And here the middle one will be the cord line and then average relative in here. So this will generate an angle we call as angle of attack. And here you can see the drag, which is generating. So here effective lift and this total lift induced drag also will be generating over here. Then shape of the aerofoil. So there are different uh, shape of the aerofoils are there. Uh, so depend on the operation and depend on the speed and depend on the Mach number, okay, and uh, their uh, thickness, things will be varying it. The shape of the airfoil determine the amount of turbulences or skin friction that it will produce. Uh, the shape of the wing consequently affect the efficiency of the wing. Okay, so based on that, the shape of the wing or shape of the airfoil, uh, the wing things also will be affecting because wing is uh, made up of combination of airfoil. So a wing may have various airfoil section from root to tip with taper, twist, sweep back, and sweep forward. So these are different types of angle. As you can see in the right side, different uh, aeropoils are there with different thickness. If you start from the top, it's having very less thickness. As you can see, come down, the uh, thickness of the aerofoil is varying it. Okay, so based on the shape of the aerofoil, uh, the shape of the wing also will vary, and it also affect the efficiency of the wing. Also. Next, we will go to the shape of the wings. Okay, so based on the aerofoil, the how the wing shapes will come. So as you can see the first one, as you can see the first one, which is having a straight wing. Okay, so uh, here is no twist, nothing is there. And if you come to the down one, swift back wing, having a more advantage of this. Okay, so it will generate more lift. And as you, this is the mostly uh, conventional, using in conventional aircraft in the civilian aircrafts. And this the middle, you can see the delta wing, which is uh, generating more amount of lift, which is mostly used in the fighter aircrafts because they have a very uh, tactically moving up and uh, down direction. Suddenly they'll go uh, in any area very fast speed and they have to suddenly land down, land. So those kind of things are there because of that, uh, they will be using a different kind of wings. And as you can see the right side one, there's a tapered wing. Okay, and down one, you can see the variable geometrical wing. So based on the application, based on the uses, the shape of the wing, the shape of the airfoil will be varying. Now we will talk about the weight of the aircrafts. So uh, we always know that gravity will be helping in that means gravity always acting, uh, try to pull the things whichever uh, are there in air. So you can see this force act on aircraft due to the interaction between the aircraft body weight and the earth gravity. So weight always acting in the downward force. 
So as I told, shown you in the previous picture also, because of the turning, because of the uh, walking of the aircrafts, the lift will be varying is the same way weight also will be varying. So weight is not constant, varying with the passengers, cargo, fuel loads. Uh, so based on the number of passengers, if you take a normal small aircraft in the 10 or 12, 15 number of passengers are there. So based on that, uh, uh, they will be configured the aircraft and the weight and load will be there according to the big cargo aircrafts are there. So it's it, it carrying the more load. So more weight will be acting over that. And views on fuel also. Okay, so as this one factor is there, uh, the decrease is a fuel is consumed or payload offloaded. So as we know that if more weight is there, so more, uh, more gravity and the more, uh, uh, more gravity will act over the aircraft. So they require more power to lift off. If they're having less number of load, then they will be, they require the less power. So direction is constant toward our center, act through a single point called the center of gravity. So next we talk about the thrust. Thrust is a forward force, which will move the aircraft forward. So this force also created by an aircraft engine and is required for forward motion. So for, uh, for, uh, forward acting force opposes to drag, is opposed to drag. And direction of thrust depends on design, propulsion systems, and equal to drag in straight constant speed flight. So based on that, where we want to use, what application we want to use. So thrust will also depend on that and also mostly depend on the uh, engine. What kind of, how powerful engine is there? That much number of thrust it can generate. So drag, uh, this is the opposing force of the thrust. So this force acts in reverse direction of the thrust and handles forward motion. Drag is considered as a negative force and all engineers try their best to reduce drag. Why we call this negative force which will always acting in the backward direction. Okay, it's try to move the backward direction. So it is also an aerodynamics force. It's a resisting forward motion. Increases with the square of speed. Means as we increase the speed, so thrust also will generate, lift also will be more, and drag also increases. So that's why everybody was trying to reduce the drag. So uh, two broad uh, drag classifications are there. Parasite drag, that is drag created by an airplane shape. So as we, do, we can see that the airplane is an aerodynamic shape. As if you compare the shape of the airfoil or shape of the aircraft with the truck or bus, okay, so they're having more frontal area. So because of that, uh, there will be more uh, air will be stuck. In. So they will not be able to produce that much of power or that much speed that the aircraft can produce. And then uh, as a result of air viscosity and induced drag, so produced by a product of a lift generations. Okay, so there is a formula for that drag equation. We call as D is equals to CD into half of rho into A into V square. So D is the drag and CD is the coefficient of drag. Rho is the density, A is the area and V is the velocity. So these are the few examples of drag formation. As you can see the first one, flat plate, which will generate more number of vertices. The front, it will be the streamline, but the back will generate more flat plate because as I have given you just an example of a bus or a truck. And if you come to the second one, which having a, you can say a circle. Okay, so this will generate less vortices compared to the flat plate. And when you come to the sphere uh, with uh, shapes or uh, with the fairings, so it, very streamlined, you can see that in the front and the above and lower places also, but the back would generate more vertices. And if you take the next one, which is spare inside a housing. So here is the front area, but it's gone inside it. So what will happen is the flow will be flowing over the uh, over the shapes of the airport. So it will generate the very less number of vertices. As you can see in all, all of the four pictures, so the drag is very, very less in the uh, perfectly aerodynamic shapes. So skin friction drag is also one, uh, one of kind of drag. So as you can say that we generate over the uh, roughness or over the surface of the aircrafts. So here you can see in the image, the first one is normal velocity. Okay, then uh, the more uh, drag will be generating, so the less velocity. And here you can see the zero velocity because more number of things will be increasing over here.
so i'm going to stop over here uh, for about the uh, difference classification we have seen types of drag thrust weight and lift and in the next lecture we will discuss uh, something more things uh, about more shapes of the airfoil and more flaps rudders all those things will be coming uh, so uh, thanks uh, everyone for uh, listening to me and spending time over there so i will see you in the next lecture